early players, they have their exits and their entrances, and one man in his time plays many parts. Yeah, I know. I saw a feller one time in Bosville. You know, one of those shows that... Bosville, it offends me to the soul to see such a robust, just pettywig-hated fellow tear a passion to tatters, to very rags, to split the ears of the groundlings. What's that? Hamlet, third act. Oh, I see. Did you got an Opry range up here in Fordsville? Only stage up here is the Opry House, and it ain't very big. For you know. your information, I have been summoned to this provincial hamlet in order to lend my art to a charitable cause. Charity, eh? You must be talking about the benefit for the widows and children of the miners who got caught in the blast at the White Hope Mine. That is correct, Mr. Fitchley. I was, Mr. Finchley was in Tucson yesterday, where I and my company of players are uh, resting between engagements, <laughs> and I consented to appear in the benefit performance. Yeah, well, you know, it's too bad about them poor miners. I knew most of them personally. Isn't there some hope of rescue? Mighty, mighty slim. You know, Miss Julie Clark owns the White Hope Mine since her pa died. And she's got every man in town working on the paving. Well, how about the miners who work for Mr. Finchley? They're helping too, but it ain't much use. Pretty shame. Whoa, that's what it is. You know, Paul Becker, the young fella Miss Clark was going to marry, he's down there with the rest of them. Well, as Shakespeare so wisely wrote in one of his deathless sonnets, like, as the waves make toward the pebble shore, so do our minutes hasten to their end. Oh, well, you critters! Oh, now well, this is it, Hornblow. This is Quartzville. Why, it's nothing more than a collection of benighted hovels. Uh, even so, it's where you get off. I got a two of this rig up to the barn. Oh, well. Oh. The worst is not so long as we can say this is the worst. That's from the King Lear, Act 4. I always say there's nothing worse than a ham actor. Get up there. Ham? <laughs> ham, did that miserable varlet call me ham? Oliver and Meredith Hornblow, a ham. Oh, oh, oh. Nothing but gravel on this street, and me with no soles in my shoes, and another table. Oh, I'm hungry. Fifteen cents. Oh, well, doth not good digestion wait on appetite and health on both. I'll find a restaurant. Ah, my good, good day, my fine friend. Our sign in the window proclaims this establishment the Busy Bee Restaurant. I trust you serve food. Yeah. What do you want, ham? <laughs> no, dare to call me a ham. All I said is, what do you want, ham? Because if you don't want ham, you're out of luck. <laughs> oh, I beg your pardon, young man. You want it alone or with eggs? Why, uh, what is the price of, shall we say, a Ham sandwich. Fifteen cents. Excellent. Excellent. Prepare it at once. Sure. Coming right up. Oh, just a moment. I noticed a piece of folded parchment on the table. Does it belong to you? Nah. Somebody must have left it here. You can have it. Thank you. It will serve as an excellent shield for this hole in my shoe. There. A mender of bad souls, a surgeon to old shoes. That's from Julius Caesar. <laughs> In the meantime, a man who had committed murder tried to explain a loss. I tell you, Reno, I had it with me. Had it right here in my pocket. But now it's gone. You half-witted, loco coyote. You lost it. What do you think the boss will say when he finds out, it, huh? It, it ain't my fault, Reno. Just an accident, that's all. I've been carrying them pieces of paper around in my pocket ever since. We I'm gotta find them. Now, where you been lately? No place except. <gasps> Say, maybe them sketches slipped out of my pocket when I was down at the Busy Bee Cafe. 
I was getting something to eat about an hour ago. Well, come on, cause we're gonna find out. Hey, kid. Yeah? You see anything around here like a piece of folded up paper? I thought I might have left it here. Paper? What's it kind of thick like? Oh, yeah, that's it. Sure. Old Jen had a sandwich in here about five minutes ago. It was laying right there on the table, so he crammed the whole thing inside his right shoe. In his right shoe? Yeah. Well, which way did that gent go? Down the street toward the Opry. Come on, Slim. <laughs> Hey! Hey! You! Stop! Oh, angry town folk and they're carrying guns. Oliver, this is time for action. Stop, you old coot! Angry's legs, Slim. We'll get that shoe off oh, fast. Yes. They've mistaken me for a criminal. I must get away, and what I need is a horse. That's it! My kingdom for a horse! <laughs> oh, there's one. Oh, this is an oddly shaped saddle, but giddy up. <laughs> Come on, Slim. We'll straddle our bronx and we'll run that critter down. Hello. We gotta get to the all the gear pack now. Too much shopping. Uh, we gotta get you get your gear packed? Yeah. What's the matter? Look. Little fella, tall hat, right this way, plenty hat. And those two men chasing him are using guns. Oh. That man needs help, Tonto. Oh. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. The curtain falls on the first act of our story. The next exciting scene Permit us to pause for just a moment. Here's thrilling news for all of you Lone Ranger fans. Do you remember just a few weeks ago when the Lone Ranger and Tonto captured a large gang of castle rustlers? Tonto and the Lone Ranger sent messages to each other by secret code by means of a rare old Indian finger ring. When the ring was held up to the light, mysterious signs and symbols appeared in the transparent stump. Would you like one of these exciting code rings? <laughs> you can get one by simply eating Cheerios. All you have to do is tear off the box top and say, Lone Ranger Code Ring, and send it to the address on the label and enclose 25 cents to cover mailing costs. Your Lone Ranger Code Ring will be shipped immediately. And remember, it comes to you from The Lone Ranger and Tonto were soon racing alongside the horse that carried a badly frightened Oliver Hornblow. Oh, Oliver, outlaws! Oh. You got him over that ridge, Tonto. I'll stop those men behind us. Oh, you do what me. No, no. Do him oh, fast. Oh, Get him oh, up, stop. Oh, oh. Whoa, whoa, Silver. Whoa. Look, Reno. Yeah, him and the old gent, they must be working together. There was a redskin riding with them. There they go, hightailing it over the ridge. We'll trail them as soon as I crease this hombre with the mask. <laughs> Get that cayuse off the trail. Better <coughs> not use that gun, you'll regret it. I warned you. Oh, he put a slug right through my hand! I'm gonna get you! Keep it in leather unless you want the same thing he got. Listen, no lead slinging long rider is gonna get me. I'm gonna count three. And if you men don't turn those horses round, I'll plant some bullets where they'll do the most good. One, two. Come on, Reno! I ain't hankering to stop this kind of lead. Giddy up! Yeah, yeah, giddy up! Come on, Silver! Ooh, ooh, Silver. Tonto, I see you 
both made it back to camp all right. Ugh, man, plenty scared.